Today in this video we see about uh, SIC architecture, Simplified Instructional Computer. It is the next video in the series of uh, course uh, system software. Already in the previous video I have explained what is a system software and what is application software, what is a complete system. Uh, I request my uh, subscribers and viewers to refer to the previous video and uh, get back to this video. Before continuing the concept, I request all my viewers to subscribe, like, share and comment. Okay, let us try to understand what is SIC. SIC means Simplified Instructional Computer. It is a computer or an architecture in imaginary. It's a hypothetical computer. It incorporates all the features of the other architectures which are existing in real. And this architecture we all have to understand so that further it will help us to understand the system softwares like assembler, loader, linker, its functions and its algorithm and the needed data structures, everything. So understanding the hardware of the system is very important and crucial so that which will further help us to design the system softwares. Of course, we are not going to design any system software right now. Just we are going to understand the system software with respect to this hypothetical computer. Okay. SIC comes in two ver versions. One is standard model. Another one is XC version, extended version. This XC can be called as extra equipment or extra expensive. Now, we are going to concentrate on the standard model. And the SIC machines are upward compatible. It means the programs, whatever we are writing for standard model, can be executed in extended version also. Okay, any architecture, we have to know all these components. What are the components? I have given just the acronym. You, you can remember like this, MRDAI cube. Okay, now I'll explain what it is. M is memory. We should know what is the size of the memory for any architecture. Then we have to know what are the registers supported by the architecture. D stands for data format. A stands for addressing modes. I stands for instruction format. This another I stands for uh, instruction set. Of course, this is the last right here only I directly mentioned which talks about the input output instructions and operations. So any architecture, we have to know about all these components. Memory, registers, data format, addressing mode, instruction format, instruction set and input and output operations. Okay, now let us try to understand what is memory in SIC architecture. One byte is equal to eight bits. In SIC architecture, one byte means, sorry, one word means three bytes, which is equal to 24 bits. Every byte is given an address. That is why it is known as byte addressable memory. And the size of the memory in SIC model is 2 to the power of 15, which is equal to 32,768 bytes. I want to give you more clarity regarding this byte addressable memory. Suppose, let us imagine this is a memory. Of course, we have a lot of locations. This is one byte. This is an X byte. This is another byte. This is another byte. Every byte is given an address. For example, let us assume this byte is given an address 0. Then the address of this byte is 1. Then the address of this byte is 2. Then the address of this byte is 3. Likewise, this is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. And we are going to access the locations of the memory in terms of word. What is word? A word is equal to 3 bytes. It means at a stretch we are able to access 3 bytes, that is 24 bits together. So what is the address of this word? The address of this word is 0. You have to tell the lower order address. 
Okay, next word occupies three, four, five. These addressed bytes. So if I ask what is the address of this word, the address of this word is three, and so on. So this is what we have to know about the memory of SIC architecture. Now let us try to know what are the registers of SIC architecture. SIC architecture supports five registers. Every register is of 24 bit size. And all these registers are given an ID also. Zero means accumulator. X has the ID one. L has the ID two. PC eight. SW nine. X is index register, L is linkage register, PC is program counter, SW is status word. Accumulator is used for arithmetic operations, to carry out arithmetic operations. Index register is used for address calculation, used for addressing. Linkage register will be used at the time of uh, jumping to subroutines. When the program control is transferred to some other subroutine, that time there is a need for the usage of linkage register. Program counter always contains the address of the next instruction to be executed. Address of the next instruction to be executed. Status word contains a lot of information including the condition code information. Condition code information. So these are the five registers supported by SIC architecture. Accumulator, index register, linkage, program counter and status word. Okay, now let us see what are the data supported by SIC architecture. SIC architecture supports integers. To store integers, we need one word or 24 bits. Even we are able to represent the negative numbers using two's complement here. So SIC architecture supports the data type integer. It also supports the data type character. To store character, it uses 8 bits. SIC architecture do not support floating point representation because there is no floating point hardware in the architecture itself. So it supports only integer and the character. Now let us see the instruction format of SIC architecture. Every instruction is of 24-bit length. So this is the format of the instruction, 24 bits in size. The first 8 bits, we can store the opcode. There is one bit information with, with where we can store the value of x. x can be either 0 or 1. And the remaining last 15 bits is the address. Already we know the size of the memory of SIC architecture is 2 to the power of 15. If the size of the memory is 2 to the power of 15, then to address or to access every memory location, we need 15-bit address. Suppose if I say the size of the memory is 2 to the power of 20, then the length of the address, we can blindly say it is 20 bits. So similarly, here in SIC architecture, since the size of the memory is 2 to the power of 15, the length of the address is 15 bits. So this is the instruction format of the SIC architecture. Now let us try to understand what is the addressing mode. If x is equal to 0, it is direct addressing mode. Direct addressing mode. If x is equal to 1, it is indirect addressing mode or you can call it as index addressing mode also. So what is addressing mode? Addressing mode tells us where the operand resides, in which address or in which location the operand of that particular instruction is available. In direct addressing mode, the operand is available in the address field itself. So the target address, TA means target address, this target address tells the address of the operand 
in direct addressing mode target address is nothing but this 15 bits address field itself whereas in indirect addressing mode the address of the operand that is the target address can be calculated by adding the content of the X register what is X register we have already seen which is index register the target address of the operand can be calculated by adding the contents of X plus the address field of this instruction format yes so SIC architecture supports only two addressing modes one is direct addressing mode, the another one is indirect addressing mode. In direct addressing mode, the address of the operand directly available in the instruction itself. Whereas in indirect addressing mode, the address can be calculated by adding the contents of X with the address field. Okay, now let us discuss about the instruction set of SIC architecture. I have just divided the instruction set into five. This is the first set, this is the second one, this is the third one, fourth one and fifth one just to, to remember easily. There are four instructions which moves the data from memory to register and register to memory. Load accumulator, load index register, store accumulator, store index register. Whenever there is an instruction called load, it means the data transfer is happening from memory to register. In this case, from the memory, the data is moved to accumulator. In this case, from the memory, the data is moved to the register X. Whenever the instruction is of type store, it means the data is being written into the memory. So, store accumulator means from the accumulator, the content is moved to memory. From the index register, the content is moved to memory. So, these are the four data movement instructions. There are four arithmetic instructions also which perform arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Since these arithmetic operations are uh, binary operations, we know that we need two data. Okay, now third set of instruction contains only one instruction which is compare. This compare instruction always compares two contents. One is the data which is available in the memory location and it is being compared with the content of the accumulator register. And accordingly, it sets the condition code, whether it is less than or greater than or equal to. Only these three uh, comparisons can be done accordingly it sets the condition code register that is the task of the compare instruction then the fourth set of instruction is jump instruction this just uh, does uh, conditional execution jump less than jump equal to jump greater than so from one part of the program the jump is happening to other part of the program if the comparison satisfies the condition, if it is less than, if it is equal to, or if it is greater than, yes. The last set of instruction is jump to subroutine, return to subroutine. I already said that the linkage register plays a major role in performing this operation. So what is jump to subroutine? Jump to subroutine means it saves the address. The current address where the execution is happening in linkage register and then jump to the subroutine. What is written to subroutine? From the subroutine, it returns to the main program from the address whatever is available in the linkage register. There is an address already available in the linkage register. To that address, returning is happening. Address is available in linkage register. To that address, returning is happening. Return happens. So, somewhere the execution is there. That address is available in linkage register. And then it jumps to the subroutine. While returning back to the subroutine, it returns to the same address what is available in the linkage register. Okay, now let us discuss the last uh, uh, 
uh, set i, last i, in the i cube, the last i I am talking about now, input and output operations as well as the instructions. There are three instructions related to that. The first instruction is test a device. This instruction is required to check whether the device is ready to send or receive data. How we can come to know whether the device is ready to send or receive data? It will check the condition code. If the condition code, when you compare the two values, if it is lesser than, then the device is ready. If it is equal to, then the device is not ready. Okay, once the device is ready, there are two instructions, read data, D stands for data, and write data. Using these instructions, we can perform read or the write operations. Yes, we have discussed MRDAI cube of SIC architecture. MRDAI cube of SIC architecture. Memory, register, data format, addressing mode, instruction set, instruction format, input and output operations. I hope this will give you the complete clarity of SIC architecture and whatever the content I have shown to you is more than sufficient for reproducing it as answer for your exams also. Thank you.